Well, more than 6,000 electric cooperative leaders from all around the U.S. are in Nashville for the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association's 2018 annual meeting. Joining us now is Georgia Electric Membership Corporation President and CEO Dennis Chastain and Ohio's Electric Cooperative's President and CEO joins us once again, Patrick O'Loughlin. Now, let's start with why businesses should consider expanding into electric cooperative service territory. Thank you, Christine. Uh, the main reason is because we are locally owned and locally managed. So when you come into a community where there's an electric cooperative, you're basically investing with your neighbors and with your friends who are going to be living right alongside of you. Our electric cooperative employees are there. They're easily accessible to meet your business needs, and they're also going to support your local businesses as well. Okay. Yeah, being consumer owned makes us consumer first organization. So that's what we really care about. And when you think about Rural America, it's changed since the co-ops were first started. We're outside of major cities along major transportation routes, and we, we serve a really diverse part of the country. Absolutely, a part of the country that would otherwise not have the lights on, so it's Absolutely. wonderful. Which brings us to our next question. Many of us can view electric cooperatives as the bill that we get for turning those lights on, but really, if they didn't have what you, the service that you provide, they wouldn't have electricity, and as we become more and more of a digital age, we need that electricity. Yes, absolutely. It is a vital part of our society these days that uh, no one in the country probably knows what it's like to live without electricity like our grandparents did, and we take it for granted. But it's good that electric cooperatives are there every day to supply that very reliable uh, product that we all need and we use each and every day. So it's important to us to keep our electricity affordable, certainly. But part of that bill that co-op members pay every month is also going to funding the equity that, that builds that co-op. And over time, as that equity will be returned to them as owners, because they're not just consumers, they're owners as well. Okay. Now let's talk about how you're really champions for rural Americans out there. Because like we talked about before, in densely populated areas like here in Nashville, it's a lot easier to get that electricity. Mm -hmm. It becomes more difficult as you span out, especially across both of your states, Ohio and Georgia. Uh, yes, it's a very big challenge. We cover, in the state of Georgia, for example, we cover 73% of the land area of the state of Georgia. We operate by far the largest electric distribution network in the state uh, with about 168,000 miles of line. So it is a big challenge to cover such a broad expanse of a state uh, that's mostly rural. And because of that, you know, going back to our very beginnings, we've always had to be a little more innovative in how we do things to keep our electricity affordable. And part of that's been learning how to work together. So cooperatives that are next door to each other help each other. States like Georgia and Ohio work together on things. And, mm -hmm. and all of our cooperative uh, brothers from around the country are here uh, today to talk about ways that we can work together, help each other to make our service better and our costs more affordable. And what you're doing as well is you're helping these local economy, helping local businesses thrive in these local um, economies that are you know, way far out there sometimes yeah. from urban life. Yeah, it's very important. You know, one of co-ops operate under a set of guiding principles, one of which is concern for community. Uh, so it's very important to us to be involved in local economic development to help our communities grow. Uh, matter of fact, studies have been shown that our members expect us to be involved in helping to grow the economy of a local community. Uh, and it helps our businesses as well because obviously if the economy is strong and the quality of life is good for the citizens there, it helps our businesses also. Talk about how it does help to foster economic development in Kentucky, excuse me, Georgia. <laughs> and sorry, we had Kentucky on last time in Georgia and, of course, in Ohio. Well, we, uh, in Georgia, our co-ops, there are 41 electric cooperatives that are members of Georgia EMC, and they have banded together to, with us to form a very robust statewide economic development program. So we do things like work directly with the Georgia Department of Economic Development, our state's marketing arm, to market the state of Georgia both regionally, nationally, and internationally to bring new business in. And we do a lot of innovative things. We have, uh, you know, information where we can help uh, market the communities. And one of the most interesting things that we're now doing is we've in introduced drone technology where we're actually using drones to film industrial buildings. And recently, that drone technology was used to film a building down in a rural community in middle Georgia. This building had been vacant for 14 years, and it helped to basically wow. sell that building in about six weeks. And it invested about $5 million in this community and 30 very needed jobs in a, a rural community that's been hit very hard by the textile industry closures in the last 20 years.
Okay, um, I want to talk a little bit about Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, mm -hmm. which you went through. Yep. Tell me about how cooperatives actually got together to help get the lights back on for people who lost power in those catastrophic storms. Okay. Well, I'll tell you a little bit from Ohio. Uh, we've had people in the last couple months have been, uh, last earlier last year, we're down in Georgia. We sent uh, dozens of men down there with trucks and equipment to try to help put things back together. We've also been in New Hampshire when they had large snowstorms. And, you know, that's part of uh, what cooperatives do is, is they help each other out. Now, Dennis here in Georgia, they had to live through that yeah. hurricane and all the damage. We, we sent some folks down to help out. We were a little shorthanded back home for a few weeks, but they really uh, had, had the big job of putting things back together. Yeah. Hurricane Irma was the best of anybody's recollection who's been a part of this for a long time. The single largest, most catastrophic natural disaster in Georgia's history. We had, had at the height of the storm 550,000 customers out of power. Wow. So... Ohio and 15 other states sent crews in to help us. So at one time we had 1,500 additional men from 16 different states who were in helping wow. us restore the power. We were able to get 99% of those 550,000 people back on within five days. That would have never happened without the help from Ohio and those other co-ops. And the good news is when they have those type of problems later, uh, our Georgia linemen are going to be more than happy to go and return the favor to them as well. That's yeah, I was going to say, we don't get many hurricanes in Ohio, but we've had a few ice storms, and when we do, we need, we need uh, our friends from the warmer states to come and help us out, too. We both get tornadoes, and tornado uh, season yeah. kicks off here March 1. Yeah, so. very soon. Yeah. Yeah. We had multiple ones last year. Okay. And, you know, I was recently in Savannah. There's still a lot of trees mm -hmm. down, there a lot are. of damage visible. Yeah. And the fact that you guys were able to get the power restored as quickly as you did, it's really, you know, a huge feat that you were able to accomplish. But like you said, you guys did it together. You pulled together. Right. So that's a beautiful Couldn't have done thing. it by ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you guys so much for coming on. We're not done just yet. Stay with us. We're going to continue to follow everything that's happening across rural America when it comes to power. The National Rural Electric CEO's are going to continue to join us throughout the day. They're here in Nashville for the NRECA 2018 annual meeting.